Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and in this video we'll be covering the phenomenon of post-activation potentiation. We will cover both what post-activation potentiation is and how we can practically implement this strategy into our physical preparation training. First we need to understand what post-activation potentiation or PAP for short is. Post-activation potentiation is essentially when we use a conditioning exercise to improve the performance of a subsequent exercise. And if we implement this strategy properly, it can allow us to perform super maximally for a temporary period of time. That is, we can perform at a level greater than if we didn't use a conditioning exercise. On this slide, I have an example of how post-activation potentiation can be implemented. We may perform a loaded exercise, such as a back squat, rest for a given period of time, and then perform a power exercise, such as a vertical jump. And theoretically, if we adhere to the guidelines that we're gonna go through later on in this presentation, the loaded conditioning exercise, so the back squat in this case, should enhance the performance of the secondary power exercise, so the vertical jump in this case. And it should enhance the performance to a greater extent than if we didn't perform the conditioning exercise in the first place. So how does this phenomenon work? It's clear in the scientific literature that this is a real strategy to temporarily improve performance, although we still don't fully understand exactly why it works. It's proposed that the conditioning exercise causes an excitation of the neuromuscular system, which then primes the nervous system to produce more force or at a faster rate. Now, what we don't know is what this excitation of the neuromuscular system means. So theories have emerged suggesting that the conditioning exercise recruits high threshold motor units, which can then be fully utilized during our subsequent exercise. Or it may be something related to deeper physiology, such as the conditioning exercise altering the speed of the action potentials, or it could simply be that the body is producing more force as it is expecting to be moving a heavy load, as was done in the conditioning exercise. Whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter as long as it works. We will now cover what factors need to be considered when using post-activation potentiation as a method in training. The first factor to consider is exercise velocity. We ideally want to select two exercises which contrast each other in terms of velocity and load, meaning one exercise should involve higher loads and therefore slower velocities, while the other should involve little or no load and therefore higher velocities. For example, we can come back to our back squat to vertical jump example, where the back squat is the loaded exercise and the vertical jump is the unloaded power exercise. Similarly, we can use the same principles for other exercises too. So in this example here, we have a heavy sled push being used to potentiate sprint performance. So the sled push acts as the conditioning exercise, while the sprint acts as the high velocity power exercise. This same principle should be applied with any exercises to maximize the post-activation potentiation effect. Interestingly, recent research has also shown a potentiation effect the other way around meaning it may be possible for a high velocity exercise to potentiate a heavy low velocity exercise. Although evidence is still emerging on this strategy and conclusions cannot be made as of yet. Movement patterns also play an important role in the post-activation potentiation effect. For the best effect, we want to pair exercises with similar movement patterns. So once again, our back squat to vertical jump example works well, since both exercises involve vertical force vectors, they're both bilateral movements, and they have similar muscle and joint actions. The sled push to sprint example also works well due to both exercises having horizontal force vectors, they're both unilateral exercises, and once again, they have similar muscle and joint actions. So whatever exercises we're using, it's important to implement similar movement patterns for the best results. The last important factor to consider when using post-activation potentiation in training is the rest period between exercises. Basically, there is a sweet spot of how long we should rest for, which is going to vary based on the individual strength levels, what exercises they are doing, and then also individual variation. If we don't rest enough, we won't have fully restored our anaerobic energy systems, 
And if we rest for too long, we will lose that neuromuscular excitation from the conditioning exercise. The research has demonstrated that we get best results by resting somewhere between 4 to 10 minutes between exercises. However, if we rest this long in training, it'll make for a very long training session, and it'll be practically pretty difficult to implement that. So practically speaking, around 2 to 4 minutes should be sufficient to get a noticeable effect on performance. And now we can explore how to practically apply the post-activation potentiation concept into our training. Probably the best method to use is what we term contrast training. Contrast training is when we use movements with contrasting velocities, as we previously discussed, in an alternating fashion. So taking our back squat and vertical jump example, we may do a set of three repetitions in the back squat at 85% followed by three maximal effort vertical jumps. And these exercises will have a rest period between them. And in this case, I've used three minutes as an example following our guidelines. This may be repeated until we do three sets of each exercise with three minutes of rest between each set of exercises. That way we get three sets of three back squats at 85% and three sets of three max effort vertical jumps. Following this protocol with the previously discussed principles in mind should allow the sets of vertical jumps to be of very high quality. Contrast training can be a great method to implement where we want to address both strength and power qualities in the same training session. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.